Ennis, two seconds. He'll get a shot off on the way. Got it! He hit it! He hit the shot! Syracuse wins it! That'll be to what you think. What is up, guys? Today's video is about a former player whose sky was the limit. He ultimately never panned out in the NBA and has become sort of a name of the past. We are talking about former Syracuse star Tyler Ennis. As usual, if you love basketball or football, then make sure to subscribe to our channel. Now let's get started with today's video. Tyler Ennis was born to play the game of basketball from a very young age. His father, Tony McIntyre, founded CIA Bounce Basketball, one of the highest profile AAU teams in North America. The family grew up in Canada, and Tyler was one of the players who really helped Canada basketball elevate to where it is now. For his junior year of high school, Ennis transferred to St. Benedict's Prep School in Newark, New Jersey. He excelled there immediately. He quickly gained national attention, and by his senior year, he had become one of the most sought-after recruits in the country. On an 8th grade trip with his basketball team, Ennis visited the Carrier Dome and immediately knew where he wanted to go to college. Six years later, he officially committed to Syracuse and became the first player in their 2013 class. As a prospect, Ennis was a 5-star recruit, the number 3 point guard, and a number 23 overall player in the 2013 recruiting class. Prior to the 2013 season, Syracuse had been led by All-American point guard Michael Carter-Williams and they were coming off a Final Four appearance. Tyler was the gem of the Orange recruiting class and he was going to be asked to do a lot in his first season, but would he deliver? The Orange ended up losing Michael Carter-Williams, James Sutherland, and Brandon Trish, but they brought back Raheem Christmas, CJ Fair, Jeremy Grant, and Trevor Cooney, which led many to believe they wouldn't miss the beat. It began the season ranked number 8 in the country, and the Orange got off to a blazing hot start. They started out 6-0, and in their win against California, Ennis proved he belonged on the court, where he dropped a career-high 28 points. Ennis became the team's best playmaker, and even got a chance to beat his brother Dylan, who was a key player for Villanova. Syracuse was off to one of their best starts in program history, and they were blowing out every team they played. The first test came in form of number 17 ranked Duke, and the game was close the entire way, and with just under 5 seconds to go, Duke would need a miracle to tie. After Rashid Suleiman hit the game tying three, the game went on to overtime and Syracuse ended up gutting out and won the game. After two more wins and a 23-0 start, Syracuse was handed their second test, this time in the form of a top 25 road matchup against former Big East foe, Pittsburgh. Just like the Duke game, this game went back and forth, but this time Syracuse was going to need a miracle. To this point, Ennis had proven he was a star, but could he prove to the college basketball world that he was a legend? He would be given a chance with just under five seconds to go. Syracuse won the game, and everyone in the college basketball world knew his name. Sadly, after that moment, the Orange's season took a turn for the worst. After a one-point victory against NC State, Syracuse lost four of their last six games and finished with a 27-4 record, which was a major disappointment. After losing to NC State again in the ACC tournament, Syracuse became the number three seed in the South region. They beat the number 14 seed Western Michigan in the first round, but they were matched up with Dayton in the second round. Little did they know that the Flyers would become the Cinderella team in 2014, but Syracuse fans can't say they didn't have a chance to change that. With just under 5 seconds to go, Syracuse was down 2, and Tyler Ennis would have a chance to solidify his name in the March Madness history books. Instead of trying to force overtime, Tyler shot a 3-pointer to try to win the game, but he sadly watched as it hit back iron, and the Orange were sent home early. Their miracle season had vanished into thin air in just a matter of 9 games, but this was hopefully just the start for Tyler's journey. On the year, he averaged 12.9 points and 5.5 assists, while on the way becoming a finalist for the Naismith Player of the Year award. But his shooting numbers were nothing special, which would lead to trouble down the road. After only one season at Syracuse, Tyler decided to forego his final three years of eligibility and declare for the 2014 NBA Draft. Going into the draft, some deemed Ennis as the next can't-miss prospect, and one GM even went as far as to say he would take Ennis over Kyrie Irving. He was considered to be a top 10 pick by some sources, but most people thought the late lottery would be in his destiny. Everyone ended up being wrong as he was selected with the number 18 overall pick by the Phoenix Suns. After playing well in the Summer League, Ennis was signed to the Suns and he was set to begin his NBA career. After playing in only 8 games, Ennis was already on the move. Him and Miles Plumley were involved in a 3 team trade that included Brandon Knight, former teammate Michael Carter Williams, and Kendall Marshall. He would go on to play in 25 games with the Bucks, but he struggled to make a real impact on the court. Following the season, he underwent surgery to repair a torn labrum in his shoulder, and he'd also be traded to the Rockets in exchange for Michael Beasley. At this point, he was having very little on-the-court success until he was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. After D'Angelo Russell went down with an injury, Tyler came in and actually played quite well. He averaged 7 points in 22 games, and his shooting percentages were the best he had had to this point. Things were looking upwards until Russell came back and took his minutes. 
Eventually he was waived by the Lakers and he had to look overseas. He signed with the Turkish basketball club, but things would continue to get worse before they would get better. In one of his first few games back, he suffered a gruesome ankle injury. He decided to go back to Toronto to rehab, and thankfully to them the Toronto Raptors signed him, and then waived him just so they could actually have him on the Raptors 905 G League affiliate team and let him rehab. Overall, Tyler Ennis was a really good college basketball player, but he was never destined to be a star in the NBA. He'd always struggled to shoot the ball, and combining that with the fact that he could never settle onto a team is what ultimately killed him. When he was given a chance to play, he did alright, but injuries have derailed some hopes for a comeback. I really enjoyed the Tyler Ennis days at Syracuse, and it's sad to see he didn't pan out in the NBA. But at the end of the day, he's getting paid to do what he loves, so you can't call him a failure.